Hey, this is Pat with I2R CNC, and today we are surfacing material for a project. Uh, I was planning a cut with a two inch slab of walnut, but unfortunately it was really warped and uneven, as you can see. So once I got it on the machine, I measured the distance between each of the corners and the machine bed to see the difference and how uneven it was. So once I had that difference in height, I was able to open up the Vectric software and create a new project and for the dimensions, I just put in the same as my material. And when you're doing a surfacing thing, make sure that it's material surface touch off. All you have to do with the vectors is just make a boundary around your entire project. So it's just a square in this case. After you have the vector, all you have to do is make a pocketing tool path using a surfacing bit. I'm going down 0.1 inches. That's going to vary depending on the difference in your material height. And then after you make the pocketing, make a profile toolpath and select on the line for where it's cutting. That's going to clean up the edges of your material after it's been surfaced. So then once you have both of those, since it's using the same bit and has the same settings, you can just save both of the toolpaths as one G-code file. So have them both clicked or selected and then do save toolpaths to one file. So after you have the toolpaths exported, just make sure your material is secured to the machine bed. I'm using a right angle brace and side pressure clamps so that there's nothing obstructing the surface of the material and nothing's going to get in the way of the surfacing bit so I can actually get to every piece of the material instead of working my way around clamps. And this way it's just a little bit more secure than only using double sided tape. Also it was important to put pieces of scrap wood in the gaps between the corners of the material and the machine bed if there are any. That way when the spindle is applying pressure you won't have any movement from the material. I covered the surface of the material with pencil marks. That way you can tell which parts of the material have been cut away and which are lower. Next I set my Z0 height using the scratch paper method on the material surface. It's important to touch off from the highest point of the uneven material, otherwise your surfacing bit is going to be hacking away more material than it's typically supposed to. So while I was doing a border check, I noticed that the backside of one of my clamps was obstructing the gantry from moving down the y-axis. So I had to remove that and put it on the backside of the material to try and maintain stabilization. Ended up working pretty well, but that's why it's very important to do border checks before you do a cut. Now you're good to load up the G-code and run the toolpath. With my material, only the back corner made contact with the bit for the first several passes. So let the machine run, be sure you're around to monitor it, but feel free to get other work done in the meantime. That's the benefit of CNC. So once it's done, check to make sure all parts of your material made contact with the surfacing bit. If parts are still on surface, then reset your Z0 at the same place you initially set it and run the toolpath until all parts of the material are surfaced. After which you can remove the material and either move on to your cut using the surface side as your base or run the surfacing toolpath on the other side of the material to get a perfectly surfaced piece of material. Thank you so much for watching and as always if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments, reach out to our support staff, or just look through any of our videos and articles and hopefully you can find something in there that helps you out.